At the peak of his powers, Abdallah Chitata's spoken word to his acolytes was obeyed like the law of the land. During a crisis, he calmed his legions like meek lambs listening to their master. If Karl Kahuras got the microphone to speak, like everybody would be talking, right? Like the crowd would be going on with their business till Chitata picks the microphone and says Mbagambi Musidike. He will say it once, he will be quiet. Now the only way that Chitata's utterance has power is the arsenal he has behind him. But at his hour of reckoning, Chitata's dejected and humble demeanor offers a timely lesson. In clock and dagger games, one carries his cross. Fun. Shackled in chains, he is now a captive of the law he thought he was above. So how did Chitata end up facing these charges that if found guilty, he will face the death penalty? Born in the humble hamlet of Chisanjifu village in Mukono district, Chitata's lack of privilege did not prevent him from charting his own path. In the beginning, he was a humble boy. He was really humble. Uh, I got to know Chitata when he was uh, working with uh, uh, a charismatic mobilizer called Leuben Chivazo. He was the chairman LC1 Busega. Chitata used to be his driver. Because Mr. Chivazo had introduced him to various people, uh, big people, like uh, the former minister, Mutagamba. Then he went, he crossed to work with uh, Madame Mutagamba. Madame Mutagamba, by that time, I think, was uh, with the environment ministry, kind of. Then, uh, right from there, Madame Mutagamba introduced the same Chitata to the former RDC, Zaina Muonge. As an NRM leader in Rubaga, he briefed the police leadership that there was need to disband Kampala Union Border Border Cyclist Association. In his view, this cyclist association had embraced hooligans who burnt Natete's police station during the walk to work protests. He replaced this association with the Border Border 2010, a thuggish militia outfit serving as its patron. <laughs> Chitata's rise to prominence came at the time the opposition doyen, Kiza Besje, attempted to galvanize his supporters for a street uprising shortly after the 2011 presidential election. A mobilizer, he created a grassroots network to diffuse the threat of street insurrections. This endeared him to the president and other senior government officials. The rise of Bodaboda industry and the rise of, uh, of uh, the opposition politicians using protests in the streets as a ways of challenging the status quo, had to, they had to be a counterforce. Now the best counterforce you can have are people who actually work on the streets. You have to have somebody who is as rough and willing to do anything dirty to counter protest. So you have to prop up a guy. I can tell you, after the disappearance of Chitata, we will have another character with the exact qualities as Chitata. Because the state has to have a fellow, a fellow who can put up a counter force against the forces of change. Uh, Chitata, among the uh, mobilizers that we have in this country, to show that he was powerful, uh, he was among the top people who could mobilize a thousand within an hour. Thousand young men within one hour to do havoc or to perform peace. Yet this was a double-edged sword. And me, I don't blame Chitata because I know Chitata. I know the, the Chitata. Who was Chitata originally? But these are the people who misled him. And after using him, he was dumped. Crushing pockets of dissent gave his 2010 outfit leverage to operate with its own rules of engagement outside the scrutiny of the law. This man recalls that Chitata, 
with the backing of the former IGP, Kale Kaihura, became so powerful that he gave instructions to police commanders. He was the only young person who can talk to the IGP, who can call the IGP and the IGP comes there and then. And the DPC, it can take even a month or two. But on phone call, he could call the IGP himself. You needed, you wanted somewhere here. Within a flash, the IGP has come. Chitata will change an OC and take two weeks to inform the IGP. And he'll tell him that, yeah, you. No, I've seen these things happen. You, you know, the, the first thing about this country is that evidence is difficult to find. If you said, I saw it, you, you're seeing it is not sufficient evidence, all right? You can't behave. Uh, uh, you can't hold ground in courts of law. You, you just say, I saw it. I know it happened. And you don't want to make people who actually lived it. So you don't want to put them in, the, in difficult position because they get a backlash. Chareta, a police singer from Songezi Kwata Garane Biri Kumi. Nabatu Nulabu Tunuzi, Bala Bikirawa, Wanga Inzok Firo Murim Senga, Vayo, Nava Kengeri Jacho Gerakova Nagazako Kwagalu Bakuat. Kuranga Bafuna. Fire on Yinja Zirimu Kot, Nabaz Vuya Vuya, Nizigano Tambula. However, we could not independently verify this claim. Though not an army officer, Chitata wore the regalia of a military officer. He gave orders to civilians and police commanders. He rewarded those with blinding loyalty and severely punished those he disagreed with. He instigated internecine fights that left his rivals in other border border associations battered, bruised and dead. This 29-year-old man is lucky to be alive. He was hacked to near death by members of Border Border 2010. <laughs> Jambia kumutuni mbaga wana wapiti je mwagala mjituali na enze mundekiru ufuramu. Nendo uli angane jambia na zevuga. Nendo chuka andaba antema wati. Nendo kula angu msaji akwasi ze mkono hebili kwa kuteka yu mkono wenti. Nendo teka yu mkono wenti. Jambia na hita kumukono na kwa tomu tomu lala. Katipo bala vanga vangu onzeza. Yali ankutebu wati nga ya nyweleza kupichi na asitu lako na anzisa wa ansi ni vachusa pichi ni vagenda. Many of his victims claim Chitata committed such offences because he felt he was above the law and would be protected by his superiors. Of the many accusations Chitata faced is the land dispute between him and his neighbour Nelson Wadja. He says efforts to get justice have been thwarted. Mose, don't you know that power is superior to the law? <laughs> the people who have fenced off your land have the power, so they are superior to the law. Yusuf Serunkuma, a researcher, tested Chitata's wrath when he tried to help his uncle Waja. Well, when, my, when the team to arrest us came, my uncle took off because he had been arrested before. So he takes off and we get arrested, me and er Eliasa and myself. But Eliasa was very confident because he's done this before. And we were, so we're taken to Nakasaja police station, which is the most neighboring, the closest neighboring uh, police station. So there, while we were trying to record our statements, we were stopped midway. The officer was we were told, uh, So they had to stop recording the statement. And then somehow, uh, he only wants to speak to the journalist. Like, oh, okay, so this recording the statement has been stopped. We're trying to wait for Mzei to come and see the journalist. Then as we're waiting, then we get communication again. Mm -mm. Just drive to Nagalama. And I can tell you, when we, while driving to Nagalama, we did drive in police cars, we drove in shutters, one of his cars came over. And like that entire police post shut down. Like all the officers, all of them, sat with us in Shutter's car to drive to, <laughs> to Nagalama. I'm telling you, it shut down. However, his sister, Nasingwa Amida, says Shitata is being framed. You get pangas, uniforms, throw them into the offices of Boda Boda 2010 and claim Chitata was using the same 
pangas and uniforms and guns to kill people. And again, when you are in court, you don't bring these pangas and uniforms. One of those close to Chitata says he was given guns by his superiors to carry out regime duties. However, we could not independently verify this statement. The profile of people that he was dealing with are part of these problems. They should not shy away. They are supposed to be charged equally. Because they were just there, watching, when things were going wrong. Where is Kaihura? Doesn't Kaihura know Chitata? I don't have to plead to these wolves of this regime. Kaihura is out free. Chitata and his boys are in prison. Hamida says Chitata is being punished for being loyal. The president used it to directly contact him when there are political issues in Kampala and around. He used to call him directly. At times he has called him in my presence. The deputy NRM secretary general Richard Todd Wong says though Chitata was a good mobilizer and cutter, he was not above the law. We don't compromise with criminals. Whether you're a party member, whether you're a party leader, whether you're a party supporter, as long as you are a criminal, we don't compromise with you. Because that will only tarnish the good, well-earned reputation of the revolution, which we don't compromise with. It is too soon for any member of the party to start throwing stones or accusing him that he's already guilty. We want to wait until investigations are completed, until the court has pronounced itself based on the evidence that we are not privileged at the moment to have. Those investigating him are the ones with all the evidence against him. Chitata is being tried in the court martial under section 119 of the UPDF Act, which states that every person found in a lawful possession of arms, ammunition, or equipment ordinarily being monopoly of the defense forces becomes subject to military law. Chitata and his co-accused face charges of unlawful possession of firearms and military stores contrary to section 161 of the UPDF Act at the General Court Martial. The prosecution team is building its case around a golden-plated pistol. His defense team argues that it was planted on him. At Vainty Hotel, I was never found any possession of any <coughs> firearm or any other. He remains holed up in military cells and his fate for now lies in the hands of the general court martial which must accord him an impartial, free and fair trial. At his trial, his head slumped as his eyes welled up with tears, perhaps getting to grips that life is a stage.